Hey everyone, so we are with we are here today with, with a special video. Uh, it's actually going to be another regiment video um, on the 45th uh, Illinois Infantry uh, and its history. Uh, this this video is actually being created uh, because I received a comment on my 24th and 82nd Illinois video uh, by uh, Mr. James Richardson. Uh, he actually was asking me if I would consider doing uh, a video on the 45th Illinois. Uh, so I'm going to come to you guys today with that history as well. Um, but before we dive into it, there's a couple of announcements that I would like to discuss as well. Um, today is the one year anniversary that the channel started. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Um, also, I'll be working on videos of my trip in South Carolina. Uh, and at and when I was out in, that, in South Carolina, uh, we were tackling the American Revolution. Uh, I also have new videos of me in Tennessee, uh, diving a little bit more into the Cherokee Nation and Native American history as well. Uh, so make sure you guys check out those videos. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Uh, also, make sure you guys hit click on the notification bell. Uh, so you guys can be notified when new videos are being released. Uh, I try to upload as often as I can. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the history of the 45th uh, Illinois Infantry. Uh, it is the Washburn Lead Mine Regiment was organized by John E. Smith of Gallon, Illinois, who was commissioned, commissioned Colonel of the Volunteers, July 23rd, 1861. The regiment during its organization, redundance as the Joe Davison County Fairgrounds near Galleon, and the camp was named Camp Washburn in honor of E.B. Washburn, member of Congress from the Galleon District. Seven companies of the regiment only were in camp at Galilee, but the regimental organization was fully composed and the regiment armed with the short infield rifle. November 22nd, 1861, Camp Washburn was broken up and the regiment ordered into camp at Camp Douglas, Chicago. Here the full complement of 10 companies was made up and the regiment mustered into service of the United States as the 45th Illinois Infantry. Uh, December 25th, 1861. July 12th, 1862, the regiment, the regiment left Camp Douglas for Cairo, Illinois, where it went on to camp on the, on the 15th of July, or January. February 1st, the 45th was assigned to the 2nd Brigade, commander, commanded by Colonel W. H. L. Wallace, 1st Division, commanded by General John H. McClellan. February 2nd, the regiment left Cairo with General Grant's army for the Tennessee River, and on the 4th, pitched its tents on the 1st camp in the field at Camp Hollett, 4 miles below Fort Henry. On the evening of the 6th of February, the regiment marched into Fort Henry, the enemy having moved out the same day. February 11th, the 45th with the division moved out of camp at Fort Henry at 4 o'clock p.m. and took the direct road to Fort Donaldson. February 13th, during the afternoon it took its position on the right of the line. The afternoon of the 13th, the 45th was sent to the relief of the 49th Illinois Infantry which was engaged close up to the enemy's works and received its baptism of fire. It, it came hot but brief and the regiment emerged benefit, benefit by the encounter. The 45th bore its full share of the three, day, three days fight at Donaldson. Though its loss was small, only two killed, 26 wounded. The regiment remained in camp at Fort Donaldson until March 4th when it marched across the county to the mouth of the Big Sandy and took boats up the Tennessee River to Savannah, arriving on the 11th, re remained in camp at Savannah until March 25th. While at Savannah, the, the 45th 
formed part of what was called the Pin Hook Expedition, which was simple, simply a two or three day scout in the interior towards Pin Hook. March 25th moved to Pittsburgh Landing and went into camp with McClellan's division. The camp of the 45th was at the junction of the Pruden and Corneth Roads, not far from Shiloh Church. On April 6th, the regiment, the regiment had its regular Sunday morning inspection and left it, its armies, arms stacked on the color line at the, at the close to take breakfast. The breakfast call had just sounded when the long roll was beaten on the color line. And in three minutes at most, the men had their arms in their hands and, and the officers were in their places. The order was to move to the left and front double quick to support Sherman. The 45th went into the fight at Shiloh with about 500 men. It was in the front line from first to last of the Tow Day's fight. On Sunday, it fought mainly on its own hook after the first engagement under the commander of, command of Colonel Smith and fought back and forth over the same gr ground a number of times. Late in the day, it fell back lustily and took its place with the brigade and division on the, on the right of the line when the final stand was made. Here the 45th laid on its arms during the night and in the rain and moved forward on Monday morning daylight. The second day it was a forward movement nearly all day and after the final charge Monday the regiment stopped almost in its own almost in its old camp from which it had to suddenly depart on Sunday morning. The losses of the 45th at Shiloh were 26 killed and 199 wounded or missing. The missing not wounded were, were, were but few and they rejoined the regiment when it went into its old camp about dark on Monday. April 24th, the 45th broke, up, broke camp at Shiloh and moved forward with the army on its slow approach upon Corneth. During the siege, the 45th was attached to the 1st Brigade, 3rd Division of the Reserve. Its labors in the trenches were severe, its dangers were few. June 4th, 1862, the 45th was ordered from Corner to Jackson, Tennessee, where it arrived with the 3rd Brigade on the 8th of June and went into camp in a beautiful grove just east of town. The summer of 1862 was spent in camp at Jackson or in railroad guard duty at different points along the line. August 11th, the regiment was assigned to guard duty south of Jackson on the line of Mississippi Central Railroad. Four companies were stationed at Meldon, one company at Tregans, and five companies at Toons. On the 31st of August, Armstrong, Armstrong's Rebel Cavalry Brigade raided within the Union lines and struck the railroad just north of Toons and Tunes at Taggers and Meldon. Company C was captured at Trigans. At Meldon, a sharp fight occurred, but the rebels were repulsed. The loss in the 45th was three killed, 13 wounded, and 43 taken prisoners. September 17th, the regiment returned to camp at Jackson. November 2nd moved from Jackson to LaGrange, Tennessee. The regiment did Provest guard duty in LaGrange until November 28th when it moved forward with the army on the Holly Springs campaign. The 45th marched south as far as Springdale where it countermarched for the return trip. At Springdale, Colonel John E. Smith received his commission as brigade general and took formal leave of the regiment. Though he had been in command of a brigade for some months, the 45th moved on the return march December 22nd to north of the Tallahatchie River where it remained until January 1st, 1863. When it continued its no northern march to Memphis in the month of February, the 45th moved with General Grant's army on transports down the river from Memphis to take part in the Vicksburg campaign. 
Stops were made at Lake Providence Vista Vista Plantation and Milnix Bend. At Milnix Bend, volunteers were called for to run the battalion's batteries with transports at Vicksburg. The entire regiment, officers and men, volunteered for this duty. The matter was decided by making a detail of quota assigned to the 45th. The detail compressed the crew which manned the steamer An Angelo Saxon and took her safely through, loaded with a full cargo of com commissional stores. The following composed the detail Commander Captain L.B. Frisk, Company E pilots, privates Charles Evans, Company D Joshua Kendall, Company K engineers, Sergeant A.J. Epson, Company B Charles Flint, Company G firemen, privates J.M. Primer, Company F W. M. Tripp, Company G Johnny Paul, Company C. May 1st, 1863, found the 45th on the east bank of the Mississippi at Brunsburg, Brun, Brunsburg, below Vicksburg, and the same day started with General Grant's army on the famous campaign which ended in the capture of Vicksburg. The regiment participated in all the battles of the campaign forming part of Logan's division. The position of the 45th during the siege of Vicksburg was immediately at the White House on the ja on the Jackson Road, in front of the Rebel Fort Hill, regarded as the key to the fortress. The 45th took part in three charges against the Rebel works on the 19th, 22nd of May, and the 25th of June. On the 22nd day, Major Luther H. Crown was instantly killed. About a month was occupied in running a sap and digging a mine under Fort Hill. On June 25th, the mine having been charged, the match was applied. The 45th was selected as a storming party. When the breach should be made immediately after the explosion, the regiment rushed into the crater but was met with a murderous fire by the enemy who was still protected by an embankment of about three feet in width which had been thrown up by the rebels as an er inner line in case of outer works should be demolished. The loss to the 45th in, in this charge was 83 officers and men killed and wounded. Among the killed were Maslin Smith, Lieutenant Colonel, Lyndon B. Frisk, Major, and a number of non-commissioned officers and men. Among the wounded was Jasper A. Maltberry, Colonel of the Regiment. It was a bloody affair indeed. When the city surrendered in account of its conspicuous service during the siege by order of General Grant, the 45th was given the advance of the Union Army when it entered, the, entered that stronghold and its flag was raised upon the courthouse by Colonel W. M. E. Strong of General McPherson's staff to denote the possession of the city by the Federal Army. The 45th was detailed for provost guard duty in Vicksburg on the 4th of July and continued to do duty until October 14th when it was relieved to take part in the Canton Raid during which scrimmage occurred with the rebels at Bogota on the 17th, from November 7, 1863 until February 3, 1864, the 45th was in camp at Black River, some 10 miles east of Vicksburg. In the months of December and January, the regiment almost to a man re-enlisted as veterans. From February 3rd to March 6, the 45th took part in the Medrin Raid and was engaged in a skirmish at Chunky Station where three men of the regiment were wounded. March 17th, the 45th left Vicksburg for Cairo where it was given 30 days given 30 days veteran furlough. May 4th, the regiment again 
redundance at Cairo and rejoin the army. Then on the Atlantic campaign, the 7th day of June, at Edwall Bridge, Georgia, going by steamer from Cairo to Clifton, Tennessee, and thence marching over land via Pulaski, Tennessee, Huntsville, and Decatur, Alabama, Rome, and Kingston, Georgia. From this date, the 45th took its share in the Atlanta campaign before and after the fall of Atlanta until the beginning of the march to the sea. On the march to the sea, the 45th was attached to the 17th Army Corps as it had been during the Vicksburg campaign and from the force first organization of that famous corps left Atlanta November, November 12th and arrived in Savannah December 21st, 1864. January 4th, 1865, the 45th left Savannah, Georgia by steamer and debunked at Beaufort, South Carolina on the 13th. January 14th, the 45th was engaged in the attack on Piccolo, South Carolina and suffered a loss of eight men wounded before the place was taken. January 30th, the 45th left Piccolo to continue the march through the Carolinas via Orangeburg, Columbia, Ridgeway, and Waynesboro to Sugarloaf Mountain, where on the 28th of February it went into camp, having marched over 300 miles in less than in less that a month. March 3rd moved on by Chera, Fayetteville, and Bentonville to Goldsboro, North Carolina, where it arrived March 21st, March 24th, having been in the wilderness over 50 days. At Fayetteville, March 11th, the city surrendered to Sherman's Bummers and W.M.C. Taylor, then a private, but afterwards quartermaster of the 45th received the surrender at the hands of the mayor. April 10th, the line of march from Goldsboro was continued. The 45th moved on to Riley and Greensboro and then back again to Riley, where it received the news of the surrender of Lee's and Johnston's army and saw and heard that the rebel was a failure and that the war was over. May 1, 1865, the 45th, with the rest of the 17th Corps, took up its march for Washington, D.C. via Richmond. This was its hardest march of the war. The 40, 45th, or 15th and 17th Corps were engaged in a short of a foot race to see which would reach Washington first. The 17th Corps in one day made 39 miles. The 15th Corps made it in one day 35 miles. It was a hard tussle, but neither Corps won the race. They arrived at Alexandra and went into camp on the same day, May 19, 1865. From May 14, 1864 to May 19, 1865, the 45th marched 1,750 miles. The 45th participated in the Grand Review at Washington May 23rd and 24th. June 6th, the regiment left camp at Washington for Louisville, Kentucky by rail and arrived at the later city on the 8th. July, July 12th, 1865, the regiment was mustered out of service at Louisville, Kentucky and arrived in Chicago July 15th, 1865 for final pay and discharge. All right, you guys, so that is a little bit of the history of the 44th are the 45th uh, Illinois Regiment. Um, as you guys can see, they went through a lot of different uh, wars and battles. Um, now, Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry was the two places that they had the most captured. Um, there was one soldier too uh, that actually wrote a book of his time at Fort Henry as well as Fort Donal or at Fort Donaldson you know, during his time there, even with Grant. Uh, so I'm gonna look a little bit more into that book as well, maybe read a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna post the title of the book uh, in the video as well, so you guys can, uh, you know, Google it and, make, and purchase the book if you think it may sound interesting. 
Um, it kind of gives you a little bit of backstory to the soldiers' life uh, and their times in Vicksburg, um, as well as Fort Donaldson, Fort Henry. Uh, so that's going to be pretty interesting to go with. Um, I'm going to add the generals in the video as well. Um, I appreciate all the support from all you guys. Uh, keep the comments coming. I love. Uh, the comments coming in and people making suggestions and different videos they would like me to do. Uh, appreciate that again, James, for the uh, uh, the uh, suggestion of doing the 45th. I appreciate it. Uh, keep coming in if you have any other requests, um, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to read the comments, do videos for you guys. Uh, but with that being said, I love you guys and talk to you guys again soon.